Exodus is the eighth and first posthumous studio album by Yonkers legend DMX, who tragically passed away back in April due to a heart attack, I believe. Uh, yes, it is very true. Uh, the rap game and I guess the music industry altogether got a little less brighter uh, in April when we lost the MX, but I think that it is still a very good and a very, very uh, refreshing and just a, a really good feeling to see that the MX didn't leave this world empty handed. He didn't leave us empty handed, at least. Now, posthumous albums are a very, very hard thing to make. You know, they're very hard to perfect and they're very hard to like just really 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 hard to get out to people but at the same time you know despite if the posthumous album is gonna disappoint us you know despite if if we know and feel that the project was rushed we are all gonna want to hear those posthumous albums regardless on one hand posthumous albums never truly turn out the way an artist want to and it is just it's very rare for a posthumous album to you know come out and be a result of what the true vision for it was for but at the same time i feel that we are, are we all are gonna want to like jump in and want to hear these posthumous projects because we all want to hear our favorite artist's voice you know whether that they are still alive or, or whether they're gone you know they will always live forever in in their music and we're always going to want to hear them and we especially want to hear the posthumous albums because we know that they clearly had more to offer before they passed away. And, you know, I think the sad part is that a lot of us don't really know, like, or really appreciate what they had to offer until they pass away. And you realize, like, wow, like, they really, really had a lot of potential and they had a lot more to offer. Um, but at least they did offer what they did. Now, <clears throat> now I'm not going to sit here and say that every posthumous album I ever heard or that has ever been made is terrible, you know. I have actually heard very, very few posthumous projects that turned out decent, if not amazing. You know, for example, Circles by Mac Miller, in my opinion, is a prime example of what a posthumous album should look like. You know, that album was fucking perfect. It was beautifully created. It was you know, beautifully producing everything, you know, like just that whole project is very, very uh, memorable and enjoyable from start to finish. Um, and you can really feel the emotion and not the emotion and like, and like a sad feeling as if, you know, you're sad because you can tell that it was a very rushed project and it's not going to do well next to a legacy that Mac Miller had. But instead, it's a kind of sadness that you, that you feel because it just makes the reality of the fact that Mac Miller is gone more and more fucking real because you can you can like really really feel his emotion you know you want to cry to every song and then it just makes you realize that this might be one of the last albums that we're going to get from mac miller now that he's gone however most posthumous projects turn out highly disappointing and they end up leaving a very very uh, unfortunate stain on an artist's legacy that they tried so hard to build up you know not saying that their legacy won't ever get forgotten or that it will it will be laughed on because of these posthumous albums, you know, no matter what, what an artist made when they were alive, that will always live on forever. But it's just these posthumous features that would always, not features, but projects that will always just be a reminder of, of a record label or whoever was in charge of those posthumous projects, just, just pretty much using an artist's content to kind of exploit it and earn money off of it. For example, let's take a look at Tupac's discography. While Tupac was alive, he made four projects, and these projects were Tupac Clips Now, Strictly For My N-I-G-G-A-Z, uh, Me Against The World, and his Death Row's his Death Row Records a debut studio album, All Eyes On Me. Now, I don't know about you all, but I personally feel that those four projects are fucking classics. Specifically for me, it's Me Against The World. You know, I love that album, that's my favorite Tupac album. I personally feel that uh, the Tupac before he got into Death Row was the Tupac that was raw, you know, he was, he was emotional, you know, he truly, truly told a really emotional backstory of growing up in the gutter, you know, growing up poor and everything. You know, he truly showed like how amazing, how how of an amazing feeling it is when you're somebody who is due from the start has no valid shot at success uh, at success or anything. It just it just really showed you the excitement and emotion of someone like Tupac being able to be a very 
great influencer and be able to live all his dreams. You know, not saying that All Eyes on Me is a bad project. You know, that one is really enjoyable as well. And I know a lot of people love All Eyes on Me as well. Um, but personally, I feel that pre Death Row Tupac will always be the best Tupac in my opinion. After Tupac passed away, there have been probably seven posthumous albums that have come out. You know, two of them are pretty dope. You know, those are the Don Killuminati Seven Day Theory album. You know, that one is actually pretty fucking dope. You know, that has Hail Mary uh, to Live and Die in LA. You know, it, it, it had a lot of great potential. And I think that one is probably his last good album, in my opinion. I would also argue that Better Days is a really, really good posthumous album as well. You know, it's pretty decent. You know, that one out of all of them is my personal favorite posthumous album uh, by Tupac. You know, that is, it, it was very decent, you know, it wasn't like great, but it was really enjoyable as well. And then after that, it's just all these other posthumous features, uh, not features, sorry, but projects that I feel just have been forgotten, you know. I don't really hear a lot of people talking about these other posthumous projects as being, you know, one of the best, like, shit in Tupac's uh, discography, you know. It just, it just seems like very very half as posthumous albums and it's not entirely Tupac's fault it's just you know whoever was in charge of them they didn't really take their time to make sure that these albums turned out to a, a, a very high quality album especially for an artist like Tupac now now I don't want to say that there aren't people out here that don't like these albums you know I don't want to say that Tupac's posthumous albums are really fucking bad you know we could assume that there are just people out there who just aren't aware that these albums that these albums exist you know maybe there are people that never really taken a closer look at Tupac's discography and seen you know like what he created after he was gone you know like like all, all, all the shit that got you know put out after he was gone but at the same time i doubt that because tupac by far has one of the biggest fan base in hip-hop history so i would assume that there are many many tupac fans out here that know these album these albums exist but they don't like to talk about them because they just aren't the same or I guess just aren't as good as the past albums that Tupac dropped while he was alive. Now, I don't want to say here in this in this respect any Tupac fans because I am one of them, you know. I love Tupac. He is one of my favorite hip-hop artists in general. You know, he is in my top 10. You know, I got into him when I was in middle school when I was trying to get into hip-hop. You know, he created some of the best hip-hop music I ever heard that I still go back to listen to to this day because that's how good of an artist he is but honestly like an, an honest question for you all is do you all really really like these posthumous albums like Tupac I don't want to say that you guys don't enjoy them at all you know I'm sure there's maybe one or two or even three songs from each of these posthumous albums that you all really really enjoy but at the same time are they really memorable like do you all really consider them to be some of the best shit that, that Tupac has made after he was gone because to be honest I come back and hear these posthumous albums time and time again and I just kind of feel that they kind of have a little bit of a disrespect to Tupac's legacy which is which is fucked up especially for an artist who is considered like probably one of if not the greatest hip-hop artist of all time. Now, although I obviously have very mixed feelings for Pashmi's project, and although I was personally had a little bit of doubt when it comes to a Pashmi's album by somebody as big as DMX, I still gave this album a try for two reasons. You know, number one, Swiss Beats was the one that was in charge of releasing this project, you know, like uh, finalizing it, you know, you know, mixing it at all and whatnot. You know, he was the one in charge of all of that and in charge of bringing this album out to the to, to the world you know um i personally love switch beats you know he's worked with many talented pro uh, not producers uh, but artists you know he is one of the most talented producers out there so i was really excited to see how this album would, would turn out especially because swiss uh took like full care of it and i have no doubts that he would do whatever it takes to make sure that it would turn out as great as what dmx envisioned for it and number two uh, most posthumous albums come out after uh, artists have passed away you know uh, usually it means that an artist didn't get to finish it and you know these other people in charge of it had to do like you know the best they could to make this to make this album uh, turn out great, um, but that's not that that's not the case here because DMX actually had already finished 
uh, recording this project and all that uh, before he passed away. So this technically isn't the album after DMX was gone. It's the album before DMX was gone. And we just happened to get it a month after he passed away. So that's another, that's another reason why I wanted to hear it. This is DMX's eighth studio album and first solo album since 2012's Undisputed. So this was obviously going to be a comeback album as DMX finally makes a comeback and I guess attempts to adapt in modern day times. That's right, it had been almost nine years since we've heard anything new from DMX and it's obvious that Swiss and DMX really, really wanted to make a comeback album. You know, nine long years of DMX probably taking a mental hiatus for his own well-being, probably focusing on his health and on his family and everything, and most likely, like, contemplating uh, retirement many times over and over these past nine years. And I'm pretty sure that this was supposed to be DMX's comeback to make an album in modern day times, you know, trying to come back as one of the biggest legends that blew up back when he first started out in like the late maybe mid 90s you know an album that i personally don't know if people would have uh welcomed with open arms you know i sure a lot of people would have clowned on dmx if he were still alive but since he is dead now i'm sure that there are many people out here who are open to it and are open to hear i guess what could have been you know what dmx had to offer when it comes to a modern dmx album now according to swizz uh this album was actually supposed to be called it's dark and hell is hot again which pretty much means it was supposed to be a sequel to DMX's debut studio album and probably the best album he's ever made in my opinion. You know, once again proving that this was supposed to be a comeback album, you know, DMX making a comeback by making a sequel to his most beloved uh, studio album ever. Kind of like how Busta Rhymes came out with the ex Extinction Level sequel after all these years last year. You know, Busta Rhymes trying to make a comeback, you know, making a very, very long album. Uh, just giving us that like OG Buster Rhyme style back. Only I personally feel that if DMX were to make a sequel on his debut studio album, I personally feel that he would have done a lot more better than Buster Rhymes did last year. Like I said, DMX attempts to adapt to modern day times throughout this whole project, but he also uh, uses it to uh, reflect on his life. You know, it kind of sounds like a dark ghetto gospel album you know i know that dmx is very very religious and you know he, he uses a, a lot of like religious like you know words and context throughout a lot of his music and it seems that this one now more, more than ever feels like dmx like writing like his own like little bible i guess now honestly it was very rare whenever we got the real dmx you know his emotions everything you know, it's very rare when we got like the sentimental DMX because it seems that we always got like the very hardcore like Yonker style rapper that we all know and love. And I think this album is living proof of what any every artist should want to get to a son at some point, you know, making a raw and real and just an uncut version of themselves where they just tell the whole world what they're going through, you know, you know, no capping whatsoever, you know, just an uncut album where nothing is like cut off or anything you know you know nothing is dropped you know just just a very like raw and real project where they tell the whole world exactly what they're going through and what they see in their world and that's exactly what we get on here you know a no capping album a real raw and uncut album as dmx gives us a front row seat of what it's like to be in his world one last time and honestly it's it's kind of like, I don't, I don't, I'm not going to say it's a shit show because I don't think this album was a shit show at all, but I definitely have a lot of mixed feelings about how this uh, in, entire project turned out. Now, the first track in the album entitled That's My Dog had me a bit worried, admittedly, uh, thinking that I wasn't going to like this album that much, uh, which kind of sucked because I was actually really excited for this particular track, you know, uh, it had a feature with uh, the locks, you know, meaning, uh, uh, Jada Kiss, Styles P, and Chic Lounge uh, reunited once again to uh, create this track with uh, with DMX. You know, uh, these are people that have worked with each other for many, many years. You know, they have done many songs together. And admittedly, I was excited for Jada Kiss. You know, Jada Kiss did a really good job on here. You know, both him and DMX did this, like, really, really set the tone for the album where they pretty much showed that this album was is no is no play around at all. It was 
pretty much going to be like this really, really hardcore album where DMX is not fucking around anymore. You know, he is back and he is back with a fucking vengeance. And honestly, I just don't think I really fucked with Styles P or Chic Louch on this particular track. And also, I personally didn't like the chorus on this track either. You know, it was a bit repetitive and it was just... I guess it was just not my style, you could say. I know there was a lot of people complaining that they felt that a lot of this, a lot of the songs in here were just really short and simple. But to be honest, y'all, that's just the way DMX was. You know, he was, he was a very short and simple guy. He just didn't really seem like the type to really like want to use a bunch of like complicated shit for a lot of his projects. <clears throat> I guess that's the reason why certain songs like Hold Me Down with Alicia Keys and Skyscrapers uh, with U2's frontman uh, Bono and even Take Control with Snoop Dogg, you know, you know, those three tracks are prime examples of songs that are that are a bit short and simple and, you know, you know, just songs that didn't really like have any like complicated like production to it. You know, it, they definitely had a lot of like creativity and talent with it. You know, Alicia Keys and Bono created some very, very amazing and beautiful uh, vocals and hooks for these particular songs. You know, Snoop Dogg and DMX came together to make a very classic like old school love song. You know, they used a sample of a song by Marvin Gaye. I forgot what song it was called, but the chorus is a song that Marvin Gaye made. You know, it's just it's just like like really traditional shit like that where it's like, you know, they just have, you know, someone rapping and then someone makes a very, very beautiful chorus. You know, sometimes they use samples of past songs. You know, it's 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 like the traditional uh, uh, formula that not that many people want to use anymore because we all want to adapt to, nor to modern day times and occasionally want to make genre bending shit. Um, but personally, I really enjoyed it, and especially because DMX really knows how to work well with it, and I do appreciate what Swiss uh, did for these particular tracks, where he made it true to the style of what DMX did, you know, pretty much for every song on here, and just the whole aspect of the entire album really, really stays true to what DMX was about, you know, what he represented, and like how his style was before he passed away you know how it was when, when we all first loved him and how he still continued to keep that style until he passed away i will also say that the skits are very very uh, traditional and are very very true to what dmx did you know for example the stake up skit was a very very like funny and just awesome tribute to ice pick you know jay ice pick a uh, jackson uh someone who jd kids spoke very very highly of in his ignatius album uh, that came out last year i believe um you know ice pig did a lot of the skits for uh, for a dmx and for anybody else who was a part of that a uh, rough riders like uh era you know you know that whole like uh a gang and whatnot i i guess not a gang but just but just uh that whole group and everything um you know ice pig just made a lot of like funny skits for them you know this one is just like this like funny like skit where ice pick is like you know like doing a stick up on somebody and shit like you know he you, you just really really hear like how like how much fun he had making this particular skit you know i don't know if this was a skit before ice pick died i know he passed away uh, last year but you know i don't know if this is an old skit or it was a skit that he made before he died uh but it was just really really funny and you know, it's just really good to see uh, DMX uh, pay tribute to Ice Pick, you know, somebody who had a very, very big influence not only on the rap game, but just on every other artist that he worked with as well. I also love a lot of these acoustic, you know, segments throughout the project, you know, uh, specifically on two tracks entitled Walking in the Rain, uh, which has a, a feature with Nas, uh, Exodus Simmons, who is uh, DMX's uh, youngest son, which the album is named after and a surprising feature with the non porter from the 12 out of all people you know that song is is really really like dope with the acoustic guitar and everything you know uh the non makes a really really like uh, a very beautiful hook on this one as well and I, I also love how you hear exodus in the background sort of like you know sing along to it you know you, you can tell that he was really really having fun seeing his dad in the studio and just singing these songs with his dad you know it, it's I, I really loved how dmx included that in here because it really did show how uh, out of everything dmx loved being a father and there's also the song a uh, letter to my son call your father which has a feature with usher and brian king joseph uh, brian king joseph is the is a very very talented person who plays uh 
uh, the uh, violin. Uh, he showed up on America's Got Talent a few years back. You know, I really love what he did in this song. You know, you know, like he is a really, really talented, uh, you know, artist. You know, you know, he is really, really good on the violin. You know, he surprised the fuck out of me in America's Got Talent, and he surprised the fuck out of me on this album. I definitely did not expect to see him on a DMX album, and I definitely wasn't expecting to see Usher on here. You know, Usher, who we haven't heard shit from since like the early two thousands, maybe. You know, he really, like, they both really contributed well to this, like, soulful and sort of, like, gospel-related portion of the album and just the acoustic portion of the album, you know. I love how Swiss didn't include that much, like, you know, in-your-face beats in here. You know, I I would argue these are some of, some of, like, the, like, very, very rare, like, strains of, like, uniqueness in the album where it's not a lot of, like, short and simple stuff. Like, like it's some actually, like, like, very creative shit that... I really really enjoy it. There were three other features on here that I really really enjoyed and one of them in particular that I really like was definitely uh, the Bad Salt song with uh, Jay-Z and Nas. You know uh, seeing Jay-Z and Nas team up after all these years you know I I, I know that there was a time where Jay-Z and Nas sort of had like a, like a little bit of, of, of like a beef you know I don't know how petty it was I don't know if how like serious it was either you know I I don't really uh, recall um, just how bad it was, but I know I've heard about it many, many times. You know, Jay Z and Nas had like this beef, and it was really great to see them, you know, team up together. You know, hopefully their differences have all been in the past since then. And I just really enjoyed um, what they did for this song. You know, you know, it was a very classic, like you know, New York style of a rap that we all really, really enjoyed. And I really, really. Uh, enjoyed what they did for, for this particular song with DMX. I love that they came together to make this with DMX. There's also the Dream Come True song entitled Hood Blues with none other than the Griselda boys themselves with the West Side Gun, uh, Call Me The Machine and Bang The Butcher. You know, uh, both the Griselda boys and DMX were very, very big fans of each other. DMX really, really enjoyed what Griselda did for the rap game, you know, which is which is pretty, pretty, pretty under understandable because um, uh, I, I feel that that, that uh, uh, Griselda has been one of the few people that have been carrying their rap game on, and on their shoulders and I just really really have been enjoying what they've been making so far you know every track every album that they've been dropping has been consistently good and you know next to DMX they all sound really really fucking amazing like this song is just it's definitely one of the best songs on here and finally i would also say that dogs out with little wayne was a very decent track as well you know little wayne is somebody who sometimes makes some pretty cringy ass songs you know at least when i first started hearing him but i really like love the maturity that little wayne has had overall and i really love that he like sounded like he he had a lot of fun making this a uh, song you know it's very catchy it's very in your face you know, Lil Wayne has spoke highly of DMX many, many times, and I actually like, enjoyed what he did here. You know, it, it's another dream come true for Lil Wayne because he he really, really has spoke highly of DMX in, in his career. And I think that this just really pays tribute to uh, how Lil Wayne felt um, with DMX as an artist. However, I did have a few complaints. Like, first of all, I wish that not every track on here had a feature, you know. It kind of makes you forget that it was supposed to be a comeback album for DMX, considering that every track on here has a feature, you know. It kind of seems like it's just this thing where, like, you know, it seems like most of these are tracks where DMX is the feature because you, you mostly pay attention to the features on here, you know. It kind of seems like they're the like biggest spotlight on on here and you know they just because because they like put their verses first in a way to sort of hype up DMX last and you know for the most part it does work at some points but like it kind of just makes you forget that this was supposed to be a comeback album from DMX you know I would have enjoyed if you just include a little to no features or just at least included the features with uh, the biggest stars on here like Lil Wayne, the Griselda Boys, and Jay-Z and Nas. I would also say that there was a problem with a few of the vocals not being mixed well. Like for example in Bat Salts, I don't know what the fuck happened in Jay-Z's voice but it kind of sounds a bit fucked up. Like I don't know if it's just me or if that's just how Jay-Z has been doing it for a long time but I just personally feel that that one could have been mixed well you know you know as well with with other like 
uh, tracks on here where people are, are singing, you know, it, it just kind of felt like like some of these choruses weren't really mixed well, you know. I just, I, I feel that Swiss, even though I do appreciate what he did for us, I feel that he could have taken his time a little bit more with this particular album and really, really took the time to uh, release it maybe even a year later after DMX had passed away instead of giving it to us a month after he passed away because I would feel that for somebody that doesn't know who Swiss is and for somebody that like doesn't know DMX that much but know him as somebody who had passed away and was a really really big legend in the rap game I feel that a lot of outside people would see this as as you know a way for Swiss to get a lot of clout and try to exploit DMX's legacy and besides the beginning track that I didn't really like uh, I also didn't like money 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 with money back yo um that one that one was actually supposed to feature a, a posthumous a posthumous feature with pop smoke uh which I personally feel I would have enjoyed a lot more, but I guess because it kept getting leaked, uh, Swiss decided not to use it. He decided to, to to use Money Bag Yo instead because I guess he really likes Money Bag Yo. Um, I personally am not that crazy about Money Bag Yo, and it's songs like these that kind of prove it. Um, I I did not like this song at all and i feel i would have enjoyed it more if it had pop smoke on it now don't get me wrong when i compare this album to a uh, past posthumous albums that come out that come out historically in hip-hop and just in any other like uh a music genre in general uh this album is actually not bad you know it, it actually turned out pretty decent you know you know it really it really isn't a bad posthumous album but at the same time i still don't know how to feel uh, when i think about this being dmx's comeback album you know, I know that Swiss said some, something about a second Poshmas album coming out soon or just coming out in a few years from now. So I'll get excited for that, you know, because it seems like he is very passionate about that. And it seems that that one is going to turn out even better. So uh, we'll see. But for now, I do think this is a really decent and for the most part enjoyable uh, album for those who are, who are really, really, really big fans of DMX. I think this album is everything you've ever wanted. You know, I think uh, it's a good start and a good i guess try like a very very good effort for a comeback album by dmx uh, i still don't know how to feel about that being like his comeback album because for it being his comeback album it did have a lot of features you know like like it, it kind of seemed like he needed a, a lot of help to make the comeback unfortunately but besides all that you know i do appreciate what swiss did for us and i do appreciate him coming out with this when he did so yeah, go check this album out, and for the meantime, until the second posthumous album by DMX comes out, I'm going to give this project a 6 out of 10. Thank you guys so much for watching. Hope you guys enjoyed my review. Uh, what did you guys think about this album? Have you heard it? Did you love it? Did you hate it? What are your favorite tracks? What are your least favorite tracks? Please let me know in the comment section down below. I would love to hear your opinions about it. And with that being said, don't forget to like, subscribe, click that button below, all that good stuff, and don't forget to stay happy. It's like I'm living a dream, that's how to reach I've been cooking like water and Jesse B Kisses Austin, trying to be a prodigy Fast deep